now, <clears throat> in that, now, in, let me turn to Luke uh, 4 again, to Luke, to verse 14. Luke 4 to Luke 14. And the Bible says, uh, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. What I'm saying is that same Spirit, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Remember, he's, what's the Holy Spirit of God? A promise to receive, a power to be released, and a person to recognize. He returned that same spiritual power. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this for this purpose. That same Spirit that's in Jesus Christ is in us as believers. It's in us as believers. I need you to get that before we go any further. It's in us as believers. That's important. Now I'm back in Luke chapter 6. And I'm in verse 20. Now, I mean, I'm in verse uh, uh, 27. Now hear me. Uh, in verse chapter, in verses 20, uh, I need you to see, it says, in Luke 6, look at verse 20. Before we get to 27, look at verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples. You see that? And he lifted up his eyes upon his disciples. And said, Blessed are ye, be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Who was he talking to? His disciples. Not a multitude. Now hear me. Hear me. He said, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you. I'm in, I'm in verse 27. Bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despitefully use you. There's only, way, only one way to do that. It's to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, a power servant. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. There. Ephesians chapter 5. Now, look at verse 18. It says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is access, but be filled with the Spirit. You see that? It says, Amen. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but, Amen, be filled with the Spirit. Oh, you better hear me. So the first thing as a believer, we need to expect His filling. Amen. Expect His filling. The only way you can do what, what, what God wants you to do is expect His feeling. Now, hear me. It says, uh, but I say, because earlier he said, it has been said. Amen. It has been said that you are to, to uh, 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 matter of fact, now you, have to, you have to be, you have to be, have to be uh, 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 focused here now. now. Go back to Luke chapter 6. Matter of fact, keep your finger there because you know where that's where our lesson is. But there's some things I want you to see here. Luke chapter 6. Now, now before we get to verse 27, because you but something something has to be before it, right? Look at verses uh, uh, 20. I'm gonna start at 23. He says, Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. You see that? Oh well, no no, let's go back to let's go back to 21. I think you need this. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. As believers, not the multitude, that you cast away for the Son of Man's sake, for Jesus Christ's sake. That's important. As believers, beloved, you're going to be in the world and not of it. You have to make choice. You have to one voice. Rejoice ye in that day. Don't be sad. And leap for joy. Be exceedingly glad. For behold, your reward is great. Where? In heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. You have something in common with other believers before you. Now get this. But woe unto you that are rich. Boy, rich is, being rich is your God. For ye have received your consolation. The money you got now is all you're going to get. You better hear me. Woe unto you that are full. Oh, 
Oh, help me somebody. Because you, you got room for nothing else. He says, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now. We, we get ridiculed and, and, and persecuted right now. But woe unto you that, and notice how after each one, you see an estimation point. Because Jesus is saying this with volume. For ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now. For ye shall mourn and, and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Stop trying to be popular. For sit, so did they their fathers to the what? False prophets. Now he says, but I say. Now we're in verse 27. But I say. What he's saying is, but I say, because he has the authority that what he says counts. What you hear doesn't matter. He didn't say, for it is written. He said, it has been said. He said, but I say, my word is authority. I am the word of God. I am God the word. Oh, help me somebody. I am the son of God and God the son. In order for you to do what I'm telling you to do, uh, you, have to, you have to be a believer so I can, I can empower you so, with the ability to do what I'm telling you. Your, your responsibility is to respond to God's ability. Did you know that? Your responsibility is to respond to God's ability. So the first thing you need to be is you need to be fit, expect his filling. Amen. And if you're not, uh, you're not missing out, you're messing up. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit of God, you're not missing out. You're messing up. Amen. Let me ask you this. Is, is he the resident in your life or the president of your life? Oh, you better get this. Amen. Is he the resident or the president? Amen. Beloved, uh, is he in your house or does he just or does he run your house? Is he in your house or does he run your house? You need the Holy Spirit of God, beloved. Uh, let me ask you something. Are you filled right now? Are you filled right now? Amen. Because as believers, and let me tell you something that's, that's very that's very versatile. I mean, very important here. The Bible. Uh, you don't choose if you're a believer. You don't choose uh, the Holy Spirit of God uh, uh, to live in you. He does that immediately, automatically. Uh, it's like when you buy a car, you get a car, there's something that come with, with amen, that come with the car. You know, it, uh, uh, it's not uh, something that, an extra that you have to order special. It comes with the car. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, and what he, what he says is, when you get, when you get, when you get saved by Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus Christ, his spirit immediately indwells you. Now the key is, you don't get to choose if he lives in you, but you do choose if he's going to lead you. You don't choose if he lives, but you do choose if he's going to lead you. In order, and if he's leading you, then you will love your enemies. Oh, help me somebody. Do good to them that hate you. That person, you better hear me. Uh, bless them that curse you. Oh, yes, sir. And pray for them who despitefully use you. That's a sign of being indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. To be filled. Amen. So the first thing you need to, amen, expect his filling. Expect it. Amen. Now, my second section here is putting love in action. Christian love in action. Amen. I'm in verse 29 of Luke, chapter 6. Verse 29. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Uh, circle the word give. Amen. That's Christian love in action. Giving. Amen. Experience. That's, you're experiencing his feeling. Amen. You're feeling his power. Amen. Look at this. And unto him that smited thee on the one cheek, offer him the other also. That does not mean just a, a getting a, you know, a right cross on your, I mean, your left cheek and you turn it to a left hook on your other, other cheek. That's not what that means literally. Uh, 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 it means symbolically. Because whenever you do something for Christ, for some people, you're going to be mocked by others. And, what that, and that mock is like being slapped on the cheek. And what you said, you keep doing the same things and you make the other cheek available too. Don't miss that. You make the other cheek available too. Now hear me. Uh, I'll tell you what it's like. It's like alcohol. It's amazing that, uh, you know, you would think when Paul said, be ye filled, 
You say, Paul, what example would you like to use? You would think he would say, you know, reading the word of God or, you know, singing songs and, uh, you know, studying uh, uh, pamphlets about the word of God. No, he said it's like drinking. <laughs> now, let me say this. Uh, you know, I'm not, now, I have a lot of vices, but I've never been drunk. But I'm sure I'm around some people proud here that has been drunk before. <laughs> and I know some of y'all have been drunk before. Uh, so you know what it's like. Uh, when a person is drunk, uh, uh, you do things that you wouldn't regularly do sober. Right? I mean, DUI stands for <coughs> driving under the what influence. Right? Because alcohol will influence you to do something that you ordinarily wouldn't do. Right? Oh, come on now. I mean, that's what, so, and the, and the way to get drunk, you don't get drunk uh, from uh, one swallow. Amen. You don't get drunk from one swallow. So, in order to get drunk, you have to keep drinking. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Amen. Uh, you got to keep drinking. And as you continue to consume it, then, inevitably, it will consume you. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, as you continue to consume it, in time, it will consume you. That's what it is with, the, with, with, with God, with Jesus Christ. As you continue to consume it every day, all day, as you continue to be consumed by, in, in Jesus Christ, he will indeed consume you. And how do you know that you're consumed? Amen. What's your stagger? What's your spiritual stagger? Because you know how you all stagger, amen, when you're drunk. It's unto him that smite thee on, the, on one cheek, off also the other. And then to take away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man, not, not to save men, every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Don't, don't give it to him, expect him to give it back to you. That's, you know what that is? That's spiritual stack. Oh, help me somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of y'all know the feeling uh, when the police <laughs> put you over, hey, and then they have a line. Oh, y'all, you know, uh, have you... Walk a line, and then you walk a line, and uh, base. If you can walk that line straight, then you're not under the influence, right? But if you're under influence, you're gonna walk differently than the line. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, that's what it is as a believer. Uh, you walk a little differently than the world walks. Mm -hmm. Oh, help me, somebody. Amen, uh, amen. Your walk is different. Amen. Because you're experiencing the feeling of the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, help me teach this thing like I feel it. Uh, Christian love in action. Amen. Uh, the method is done based upon the motive. God is not interested in your method. God is interested in your motive. Amen. Why do you do what you do? Beloved, when your why determines what you do, you get your why in order, beloved, uh, uh, there's nothing you can't do. If your why is not Jesus Christ, then let me strongly suggest you change your why. You better hear me. Because what you do won't matter if your why is not the right person. You better, uh, uh, beloved, uh, a man in a fight fights harder because of not what's in front of him, but what's behind him. Oh, you, 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 y'all, y'all, ain't hearing me. I know uh, I'm gonna go a little deep, but you know you can hold your nose and come back out of the water. What's, a man fights harder for not for what's in front of him, but for what's behind him. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. You 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 constantly consume it until it, amen, then it uh, consumes you. Amen. Hear me, that's vital. Uh, that's what experiencing his feeling is. Amen. Power surge. Feeling the essence of the Holy Spirit. Did you know that the Holy Spirit of God, uh, Holy Spirit is, is, is his name. He's God. Holy Spirit is just his name. Uh, God is his name, the Father. God is who he is. The Father is his name. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son of God. He's God. That's who he is. The Son is his name. Oh, help me somebody. Anything you ask in my name. Oh, y'all aren't hearing me. Holy Spirit, amen, is his, is he's God, but Holy Spirit is his name. You, 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 See, you, you, it's, it's one what and three who's. God the Father planned it. God the Son, hear me now, uh, uh, 
purchased it. Are, are you with me? Uh, God the Holy Spirit performs it. Uh, God the Father arranges it. Uh, God the Son accomplishes it. God the Holy Spirit applies it. Oh, y'all ain't like messing with me. Uh, now hear me. Uh, it's, it's Christian love in action. Amen. Now, my third section of this is, one being feel, is uh, 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 reinterpreting the golden rule. Because, see, the golden rule is, is said all the time. But for us, it's a little different. Amen. Look at uh, 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 verse uh, 31 in chapter 6. Reinterpreting the golden rule is this section. As ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Amen. You know what the golden rule says. Do unto others they have been doing to you. Right? Uh, uh, look at uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 5. Go back to Ephesians chapter 5. And I want you to look at, amen, verse uh, 19. Because we, we did verse 18. Look at verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This is the thing that you that you should be doing. Amen. People that are full, hear me. Now, don't miss this. The golden rule is, is good in and of itself. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Uh, uh, that's, that's vital. Uh, matter of fact, it's, 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 it's simple. Uh, Jesus simplifies it. Uh, treat others like the way you want to be treated. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, when you are ex experiencing it, uh, uh, hear me. Uh, I've been around people that are full and, and that of the Holy Spirit of God. You just know they're full of the Holy Spirit of God. But you know, you know something? Uh, uh, hear me. Uh, they've never had to tell me that they were full. Uh, I've never been around a drunk person, and they had to, and they had to tell me they were drunk. Oh, you gotta hear me. Uh, uh, and it's the same way with the Holy Spirit of God. Let me tell you, no, don't miss this. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, another believer sees the cross on your forehead. But when you look in the mirror, you don't see that cross. That's humility. If you look in the mirror and you see that cross, something's wrong. But others should see the cross, that's when you're doing right. Mm. You better hear me. Not that you see it, amen. Then you'd wear it like a tattoo, no. But your actions, others see the cross on your forehead, are you hearing me? Based on the way you're behaving. Oh, you better hear me, amen. Uh, As ye would that men should do to you, do also to them likewise, amen. Uh, People that are full, look again at verse 19, uh, Ephesians 19. Speaking to yourselves, one another, in psalms, in hymns, and the spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Okay. Uh, go to Colossians uh, chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Oh, yeah, let me hear those pages. Colossians chapter 3. Now, look at verse uh, 16. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in what? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Same thing. Paul said the same thing. Uh, uh, beloved, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, he also says, in Colossians 3, uh, uh, look at verse 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, because that's what before you were filled, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek, nor Jew, nor circumcision, nor uncircumcision, nor barbarian, nor Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Mm. Amen. When you feel, amen, beloved, you experience this feeling. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. I'm going to my uh, uh, fourth section here. Amen. Well, Jesus, this, Jesus is talking to, amen, his disciples, but uh, he's, the folks that are, are standing around, he's checking them, the eavesdroppers, the non-believers. 
So all hear me. Now, now I, I, my fourth section, my final section here, says, uh, I wrote, I titled, Treating Others the Way They Treat You Is Not Enough. That's what I said about the golden rule is good in and of itself. But treating others uh, like they treat you is not enough. Because uh, uh, sometimes if you treat a person the exact same way they treat you, uh, what, what, what good is that? Uh, if I go outside on a parking lot and I'm out there arguing, fighting with somebody out there, a person might pull up. They don't know who the fool is. They couldn't tell who the pastor was or, or, or who the believer was according to anybody else. Because both of you out there throwing blows and cussing each other out. Well, you better hear me. Uh, look at, uh, uh, I'm in verse 32. Hear me. For if you love them which love you, you see that? That's phileo. What thing have ye? Everybody does that. For sinners also love them that love them. That's right. Amen. That's what phileo love is. Amen. Well, I love you because you love me. You know, or you might tell your, your girlfriend, I love you, sweetheart, because the way you make those ham sandwiches. But what happens when she can't make them no more? Oh, that's another topic. Amen. Then, and if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. Doing, you know, tit for tat is not being a believer. Mm. We're twice born people in a once born world. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, uh, get this. And if you lend to them of whom ye also hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. I can't file laws, I want my file laws. Every time you see them, hey, what my file laws? No. That's not how we live. We're, that's not being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, help me somebody. Um, but love ye your enemies. That's the difference. We're twice born people in once born world. Hear me. We're not vagabonds down here without a home in this world. We're not strangers down here without a home in this world, looking for a home. We are sojourners on our way home from this world. Mm -hmm. Oh, you better hear me. Know who you are. Amen. He says, but love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. Not on this side. Oh, help me somebody. And ye and your reward shall be great, shall be future. You know, the Bible says that Jesus kept his eye upon the prize that was coming. Amen. I'm looking for what's coming. Shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. Then the people will know that you belong to me. Oh, help me somebody. Then they will know. For he is kind unto, unto what? The unthankful. He's describing the highest. Who is God? And, and the evil. Amen. Be ye therefore merciful be ye therefore, therefore always comes to a conclusion, right? Be ye therefore, that means, for this reason, be like him, merciful, as your father also is merciful. Be a chip off the old block. Amen. Let folks say, boy, you just like your daddy. Oh, help me somebody. Uh, uh, I know all of you as sons have heard somebody, boy, you just like your daddy. Oh, you hear me. And sometimes they do it with, you know, with secret in the mouth. Oh, you just like your daddy, boy. The, the key is... Uh, <laughs> Express his feeling. Express the feeling of, of, of the feeling of being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Not the feeling, F-E-E-L-I-N-G, but the feeling, F-I-L-L-I-N-G. The feeling of the Holy Spirit. Look at, you go back to Ephesians, amen, and look at verses 20 and 21. Chapter 5, look at 20 and 21. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another. Submitting, see the essence of Christian fellowship is one equal submitting to another equal to the glory of God. Godly fellowship is one equal submitting to another equal to the glory of God. It's like two men walking on a bridge that's narrow. And the two men come to the bridge and they, they can't get by one another. And one of them says, he lays down and let the other one walk over him. And then both of them get to the, can progress over to, to the other side. They're both equal. Oh, you ain't hearing me. But, but one is willing to submit to the other. Amen. So the other can walk over and they can both get to the other side. Oh, you better hear me. Um, it says, 
giving thanks always, because if, you, if, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, you'll be thoughtful and you'll be thankful. You'll be thoughtful and you'll be thankful. So giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about Him. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, not the fear of them. Oh, help me somebody. In the fear of God. Amen. Uh, look at uh, Ephesians 5, 20, we read that. Look at Colossians 3, 17 again. Colossians 3, 17. Oh, I hear the pages. It says, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks. There it is again. You see that? To God and the Father by Him. Amen. Because you're so full. Beloved, being thankful and thoughtful. Being filled means, uh, tell what being filled means. It means not having room for anything else. Amen. You know, some of y'all don't know how to, you know, I know uh, I got a, one a deacon I got here, we call him Bull. He's big and I don't know if he can eat and get full, but he need to get full sometime in the evening. Amen. But if it's good, I don't think I can be full of banana pudding. <laughs> If, but you need to be full means to have not room for anything else. Hear me. Amen. Now, beloved, uh, I'm closing and I need you to hear me. Um, all jokes aside. The proclivity to make everything about self is more pronounced today than ever before. You see that in this pandemic. Uh, we see how the culture is going where uh, there's a misconception about Black Lives Matter. Uh, the term really is Black Lives Matter also. It doesn't say only black lives matter. But too many of us acting like it says only black lives matter. No. Black lives matter also. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. Very little do we hear of others yielding to human authority, much less spiritual authority. Amen. We don't even, now, it's a war against civilians and police. So you know they're not listening to, amen, spiritual authority. What a time to be, that we're living in. The church is torn between following the instructions of biblical teachings versus the teachings gained through the school of life's hard knocks. Amen. Hard, life hard knocks. You hit me, I hit you back harder. How can we grow bigger yet further away from Christ-centered precepts? This is how, beloved. As the church, as the church, we have the responsibility to operate within the same principles as Jesus did. Jesus knew how we would Reject and complain about our need to work on our discipling. Amen. We need to disciple ourselves internally so that, we, so that it reflects externally so we can become testimonies of what is available eternally. I'm going to say that again. Amen. Beloved, we need to discipline ourselves internally so that it will reflect externally That's all. what we're working on, amen, which is available eternally. You better hear me. Amen. So that we can be testaments of God. Philippians 2 and 5 says, Let this mind be in me that's also in Christ Jesus, who humbled himself and became obedient even unto death, even unto the death of the cross. For the Lord God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name that's above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee must bow, every tongue must confess, and that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We show that by the way we live, beloved. We let our light so shine in our relationship with others. If the mind goes unprotected, amen, then anything can venture in. Amen. When the mind goes unprotected, you know, God frowns on transcendental meditation because transcendental meditation means you're emptying the mind. God says, fill your mind. Amen. To meditate upon scripture. Meditate upon, he tells Joshua to meditate upon this thing day and night. Fill your mind because if your mind is full, amen, it can't be nothing else can get in. Oh, you better hear me. You need to be full. Uh, beloved, hear me. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me personalize this. Um, I'm a former uh, fighter. And, uh, uh, and Well, that's not true. Uh, I'm a former great fighter. <laughs> and with that, it, 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 I humbly say, uh, and uh, it's not an opinion, uh, it's statistically proven. <laughs> Uh, I'm a National Gold Glove champion, an AAU champion, and, uh, and 
fight of the year, a form fight of the year, now, now hear me. Uh, I've won uh, seven bodybuilder titles. And, uh, and I had a Corvette. Now, now, now this, I know this seems off, but let me, let me put it together. I had a, a Corvette, and I had a vet for five years. And <clears throat> two things that, I, that happen when, when, when you get a Corvette. One thing we do is we feel macho. Secondly, we join the vet club. Uh, and also, you notice other vets always. Uh, sometimes you blow the horn at another vet. Uh, but you never see vets pulled over for, for speeding tickets. I never got a ticket in the vet. You know why? Because just seeing the vet, uh, you knew that the vet could go fast. So you didn't do it. You didn't speed in the vet because the vet looked like, you know, you knew it could go fast. So you wouldn't speed it. Matter of fact, you go slow enough to let everybody look at it. They know the vet could go fast. Now hear me. What am I saying? When I was uh, uh, a, a bodybuilding champion, I never wore a bunch of half, you know, string t-shirts all around on the street. Never did that. I didn't, I didn't do that. Uh, I wore regular shirts and things, but being a bodybuilder, if, if I had to tell you that I was one, I wasn't one. You better hear me. If I had to verbally tell you that I'm a bodybuilder, then something's wrong. You could see it. So I didn't have to go around half naked. Oh, you ain't, y'all, 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 you see, y'all stay with me. Okay, this is what I'm saying. And, and, and in boxing, I knew that I was a, a great, a great fighter. And I would horse around sometimes with guys. We would slap box. But then when they wanted to really box, I wouldn't do it. Because I knew I was better than they were and take advantage. This is, what the, this is what I'm saying. When you realize that your physical stature was more dominant than theirs, also realize that your spirit position was more defined as well. Beloved, discipline is knowing that even when I have the ability to do something, I don't have to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let that set, set up. Just because I know I have the ability to do something doesn't mean that I have to. That's Christian discipline. Jesus Christ never said, hey, I ain't got to with that. I'm God. Never. Mm -hmm. He humbled himself, became obedient even unto death, even unto death, because he said, I'm not over you, I'm, I'm among you. So much so that when, when the enemies came to, 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 to betray him, when they came, Jesus had to be pointed out. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. They had to point him out. Because he was among the others. They couldn't, they couldn't say, oh, that's him there. Look, the one standing over on the side there. Oh, that's the one there with the big hat. That's the one there with the I love Jesus pin on his lapel. <laughs> no. That's the one with the microphone in his hand. No. They had to point him out. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Because he was filled. When they beat him, they might. So he could have legion of angels come down. But because he was filled. Oh, y'all ain't, ain't messing with me. Because he was filled. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus also, the two things I want you to get there, I want to forget this. Jesus says something to Pontius Pilate's uh, henchman, one of his sergeants. And when, he, when Jesus said something, the sergeant slapped Jesus. Jesus said, if I said anything to offend him, tell me what I said, so I won't say it again. But why are you hitting me? So don't just be hitting me. If I've said something to offend, tell me what I've said, and I won't say it again. But stop hitting me. We're not physical punching bags. That's not what that means. But being filled, beloved, you don't follow your emotions, you just feel them. You stand on who you are and whose you are. Help me somebody. There's a difference. And Jesus said, uh, the Bible says throughout this time, he, the time he was being persecuted, a lot of things he didn't even ask. He didn't say not a word. I'm not going to argue with you. For my father sees. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Uh, beloved, uh, because you have self-control, which is the ninth element of being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, the fruit is, is self-control. Because I control my path by operating in a strong awareness of my purpose through my relationship with Jesus Christ. My purpose is not to go out here and argue with folks. What good is it to argue with the person and lose the audience? 
In no way is Jesus advocating being abused or bullied or dominated by, by oppressive behaviors in, our, in any culture. How we learn to diffuse a situation is critical. Beloved, let us manage our internal conflicts that frequently affect our external communities because our testament as believers is to aid others in knowing that the Savior of our sins and life's purpose are bigger than us. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Beloved, as a, one, as a little boy said, he was six years old, he said, Lord, if God is bigger than, if God is bigger than us, Daddy, then he should be, he should be protruding all of our shirts. He should be protruding out of our pants. Uh, uh, he should be showing because he's bigger than us. So he should be overflowing. You better hear that. You're right, son. Let me close with this. It all boils down uh, to six words. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Blessed, eternal, and everlasting Father. Father, our blessed Lord and wonderful Savior, Jesus the Christ. Lord God, we thank you for all our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt on tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for what you've told us, and I pray that what, you, what you've told us, Lord God, will penetrate deep into our very hearts, our souls, our minds, and our spirits. Help us, Father God, to embrace your, yes, your, uh, your revelations, your illumination. Father God, that we will apply the proper application that will cause a total transformation. Help us to become more like you. We're asking now, Lord God, that we come down from this wonderful mountain top experience. Would you please allow us, Lord God, to find ourselves and our home, our ways home safely, O oh Lord, and, and that we will make a difference of where we are, Lord God. That we're not trying to be impressive, we're not trying to be influential, we're just trying to have an impact. Help us to be what you ordained for us to do. But not to make noise, to make money, but to make a difference. Please, Father God, forgive us of all of our sins and transgressions and thoughts and deeds of iniquity that we've committed against thee. Those of omission, those of commission, please give us a more Christ-like disposition. Help us, Lord God, to become more like you. And we will be extra careful. Give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we know that the power of the Lord is still the same. We'll never leave this altar the way that we came in. Everything that we do in word and deed and food and drink, help us do it all to the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus' name. Help us, Father God, as, a, as loving believers, as we come down, as we go by ourselves out in different places, Lord God, that we'll always stand on the wonderful fact of God. That we'll continue to bow down and worship the only begotten Son of God. And that we will continue to study to become thoroughly equipped for every good work, the error free, life sustaining, life saving, incorruptible, inexhaustible, infallible, and beautiful, wonderful, wonderful word of God. Father, help us, Lord God, to indeed uh, to, to be concentrated on having wonderful fellowship. Lord, help us to have great friendship. Help us, Lord God, to have great discipleship. Oh, Lord, that in the terms that we will have our the, the proper worship, so that, Lord God, when we're alone and by ourselves and we're tempted, we won't abandon ship. And we will be and we will be extra careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. It's in the matchless, wonderful name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And amen.